Gangrene is a type of tissue death caused by a lack of blood supply. It is not a disease itself, but a symptom of other diseases. It can be classified as dry, wet, gas, or internal gangrene. If the gangrene is caused by an infectious agent, it may present with a fever or sepsis. If the blood restriction is detected early, before gangrene is present, it can be treated by revascularization. However, once gangrene has developed, it cannot be reversed. Treatment may involve surgery to remove the dead tissue, antibiotics to treat any infection, and efforts to address the underlying cause. Surgical efforts may include debridement, which is the removal of the dead tissue, amputation, or the use of maggot therapy. Gangrene is caused by a critically insufficient blood supply or infection. It is commonly associated with diabetes and long-term tobacco smoking, and the feet and hands are most often affected. Symptoms may include a change in skin color to red or black, numbness, pain, skin breakdown, and coolness. Dry gangrene is the end result of a chronic restriction of blood supply in tissues without infection. It is a type of necrosis that develops when the blood supply is inadequate to keep the tissue viable. The term dry is only used when referring to a limb or to the gut. People with high cholesterol, diabetes, and smokers commonly have dry gangrene. The limited oxygen in the limb limits putrefaction, and bacteria fail to survive. The affected part is dry, shrunken, and dark reddish-black. Because dry gangrene is not accompanied by infection, it is not as severe as wet gangrene or gas gangrene, both of which have a risk of sepsis. Eventually, dry gangrenous tissue will fall off on its own, which is referred to as autoamputation. Waiting for this to occur, however, can be uncomfortable for the patient and can risk the development of wet gangrene if an infection develops in the dead tissues. Wet gangrene is characterized by thriving bacteria and can be very serious due to the possibility of sepsis, resulting from the free transfer between infected fluid and circulatory fluid. The tissue is infected by putrefying bacteria, which cause the tissue to swell and emit a foul odor. The tissue is also referred to as being soft, putrid, rotten, and dark. Wet gangrene usually develops rapidly due to the blockage of venous and arterial blood flow. The affected tissue is saturated with stagnant blood, which promotes the rapid growth of bacteria. The toxic products formed by the bacteria are absorbed into the body, causing sepsis and finally death. Due to the high risk of fatality associated with wet gangrene, an emergency amputation is often required. Gas gangrene is the most fatal form of gangrene. It is a bacterial infection that produces gas within the tissues. Infection spreads rapidly as the gases produced by the bacteria expand and infiltrate healthy tissue in the vicinity. Gas gangrene is caused by bacteria which are mostly found in soil. These environmental bacteria may enter the muscle through a wound and subsequently proliferate in necrotic tissue and secrete powerful toxins which destroy nearby tissue, generating gas at the same time. Gas gangrene can cause necrosis, gas production, and sepsis. Progression to toxemia, which is an infection in the blood, and shock is often very rapid. Other types of gangrene include necrotizing fasciitis, which is a very rare type of gangrenous infection that spreads deep into the body along the tissue planes, noma, which is a gangrene of the face, common in Africa and Asia, but practically non-existent in other continents, fornia gangrene, which is a type of necrotizing fasciitis that usually affects the genitals and groin, severe mesenteric ischemia, and severe ischemic colitis, which may result in gangrene of the small intestine and the large intestine, respectively, and finally, venous limb gangrene, which may be caused by abnormal blood clotting. Treatment varies based on the severity and type of gangrene. Exercises such as walking and massage therapy may be helpful, Medications may include pain management, antibiotics, and medications that promote circulation. Surgical removal of all dead tissue, also known as debriding, is the most effective treatment for gangrene, as there is often an underlying infection which risks spreading to the rest of the body. Depending on severity, this may include amputation of a finger or toe, or the entire limb. The etymology of gangrene derives from the Latin word gangrena and from the Greek gangrena, which means putrefaction of tissues. 
It has no etymological connection with the colour green, despite the affected areas turning black-green or yellowish-brown. 